Christmas movies can be a lot of things: cheesy, funny, romantic, full of plot holes, scary even. But something the majority of holiday movies have in common is all types of delicious or interesting-looking foods. So today I'll be replicating some of those as best as I can. So get comfy, relax, and、uh, let's begin with what I believe has to be my favorite Christmas movie. It only came out in 2019, but still, this is this one's hard to beat for me. It's Klaus. It's this insanely wholesome, really funny, and very unique Santa origin story. There's not too many food moments in this film. There's some weird fish stew at the beginning. That there's the kid with the carrot. But then there's also this beautiful cake, which they call berry pie in the movie, but it looks more like a cheesecake to me. Apart from my choice of berries, I want to say this turned out quite accurately. I went for a cardamom cake base to make this taste kind of Christmassy. First off, melt down some vegan butter inside a small saucepan. In the meantime, go ahead and preheat the oven to 180 degrees Celsius. Grab an 8-inch round springform pan, grease it, and if you want, line it with parchment paper as well. That way, you won't scratch your pan as much when cutting the cake. In a large mixing bowl, combine the wet ingredients: the melted butter, some oat milk, vanilla, and ground flax seeds. Set that aside while you're measuring and mixing the dry ingredients: all-purpose flour, whole wheat flour, baking powder, a little bit of black pepper, ground cardamom, and cinnamon and salt. And yeah, then bring together the wet and dry ingredients. It's best to use an electric hand mixer here since the batter is going to be a bit more thick. Scoop it into your prepared cake pan, smoothing out the top, and then bake this for like 25 minutes or until it looks something like this. And when you poke it with a toothpick, it comes out clean. So while the cake is resting, go ahead and make the dressing. Did I say dressing? I meant filling. Boil the cashews in some water for 30 minutes. Alternatively, you can also just let them soak in water for eight hours prior. But I always find that you get a creamier and better tasting result when you boil the cashews. So yeah, blend up everything for the filling: the drained cashews, some vegan cream cheese, powdered sugar, salt, thick soy yogurt. Lemon juice and melted vegan butter. This cake filling, by the way, is inspired by Artemis's Poseidon cake. I'll link to that recipe down below. Also, to give it some sort of berry flavor, I'm adding a little bit of berry jam. Most of the berryness is going to come later in the topping. Very important ingredient here would be the aga aga. Blend it up until smooth. Now here's where I'm adding some color to this. I always forget though that this is concentrated red food coloring, which is why everything turned into this wild pink.、Um, but it's okay. So the cake in the film has two layers. I first added a third of this cashew filling to my cooled base, and then to the rest of the mixture, I added some unsweetened cacao to bring down the brightness a bit. Plus, the subtle cacao flavor is really yummy. Smooth out the top again, and let everything firm up for at least ten hours. Now the berries they're using are most likely cranberries. Unfortunately, I couldn't find any fresh or frozen cranberries,、um, which is why I went with red currants. Cause looks-wise, they're kind of the same, just a bit smaller. I went for a mix of the red currants and some frozen strawberries. I added a bit of sugar to them. As well as some in water dissolved cornstarch. Bring everything up to a boil and let it simmer for about five minutes or till all the berries are defrosted and cooked down. If you're using fresh cranberries, for example, this can take up to ten. And then blend it up. <gasps> I was so happy. <laughs> Until that moment, I had no idea whether this was actually going to work or not. Not only does this cake look really cute and pretty much resemble the one in the movie. I mean, it could be higher, but this was one of the yummiest no-bake cheesecakes I've ever had. To me, it actually tastes like a Christmas version of Benjamin Blümchen Torte. If you know what I'm talking about.
All right, next movie, Home Alone. He ain't in charge no more. What do you mean? Guys, I'm eating junk and watching rubbish. You better come out and stop me. Kevin's dessert creation here is made up of different flavors of ice cream. We've got chocolate, something pink, I'm assuming strawberry, and then also probably vanilla or perhaps banana. So for the pink and the yellow ice cream, I took a bit of a shortcut, but the chocolate one I made completely from scratch without an ice cream machine, without frozen banana, without having to collect coconut cream, and um, without having to stir the ice cream every 20 minutes for eternity. I am in love with this recipe. Grab a big blender and simply add all the ice cream ingredients. A can of full-fat coconut milk, a half a cup of nut butter. I went for cashew and hazelnut, uh, which the hazelnut kind of gives us a bit of a Nutella flavor. I also added a pinch of salt, some vanilla, unsweetened cacao powder, maple syrup, and melted semi-sweet chocolate. Then I hit blend and poured this mix into a parchment paper lined dish. You could also do a smaller baking tin, maybe a Tupperware container. Place it into the freezer for four to six hours. Four to six hours is kind of the best timing for getting the perfect consistency. You can also just let it freeze over solid and then simply let it sit on the counter for like 20 minutes before serving. As for the yellow ice cream, I simply just blended up a bunch of frozen bananas and some non-dairy milk. It doesn't look very cute, um, but it's fine. We're gonna hide most of the ice cream anyway under marshmallows, chocolate sauce, soy whip, and some red cherries from the glass. They're colored red, but they're actually vegan, surprisingly so. This was obviously a joy, getting to eat this. You know, Home Alone is so iconic, it deserves two recipes. My personal favorite food scene from this movie is actually this one right here. Bless his highly nutritious microwave more macaroni and cheese dinner and the people sold it on sale. Amen. Now, I know I've made mac and cheese on this channel a million times, but for this recipe, I added a few extra things to make the sauce taste even better. Add salt to your pasta water and bring it up to a boil. Use some shortcut pasta of choice, preferably little macaroni. To a small to medium sized pot, add some vegan butter, bring it up to medium heat and let the butter melt. Once melted, add some cornstarch. Mix it in well. Then pour in a cup of unsweetened soy milk. Bring this up to a boil and let it simmer over medium for about two to three minutes. Make sure that you stir very well. Then add some melted vegan cheese to this. I went all out and got two cheeses here. This fake cheddar, for example, it gives you that unnatural orange cheese colored look. Also added salt to taste, some mustard, white pepper, and some vegan Worcester sauce. Alternatively, you could also do soy sauce, I think. Then bring together the noodles and the sauce. Then plate it up. Looking back, I could have definitely made this less orange, comparing it to the one in the movie, but I, I did make sure to serve this with a gigantic glass of milk. Those candles scared me. Big giant shout out to Nina for helping me set up this scene. It was so much fun. Moving on from one pasta dish to the next. Okay, good. I I'm gonna hang up now. I love you. We'll call you in five minutes. No, no, but buddy, don't... Uh, y you don't have to call me, okay? Good idea. You call me. Okay, I'm gonna hang up now. I painted a picture of a butterfly! I was definitely dreading making this, but I also felt like I could not not include it. Like, if you think of Christmas movie foods, Buddy's pasta is obviously one of the first things that comes to mind, right? Cook some spaghetti according to the instructions on the packaging. Now, plate them up and add your sweet toppings. First, a drizzle of maple syrup, because, you know... We elves try to stick to the four main food groups. Candy candy canes, candy corns, and syrup. And then the first thing we see him adding here is, I think, googly eyes? 
So I quickly made some very messy candy eyes. I have a recipe for these um, that I will link down below where I made them much more neat. Up next are some mini marshmallows. I only had these big ones here, so I cut them into smaller pieces, which I feel like that was a big mistake because now everything looks even more unappetizing. <laughs> Um, add some chocolate sauce, of course. Unfortunately, I couldn't find any super colorful vegan M&Ms. And instead of Pop-Tarts, I went with these chocolate cookies. And that was that. Chef's kiss is what I would say to this. Now this meal made me think. Yes, candy spaghetti is something you should never, ever make yourself. But the idea of sweet pasta has potential in a way. The only sweet pasta I can imagine eating is some sort of sweet dumpling type pasta. And so for this next recipe, I decided to make some sweet gnocchi that, no joke, were actually really tasty. I brought a nonstick skillet with a tablespoon of vegan butter to medium high. Once it was hot and melted, I added some fresh vegan sweet potato gnocchi that I found at the organic store. And on the packaging, it says to just fry them for like five minutes, so that's what I did. Once they're crispy, I added some maple syrup. I let everything caramelize for another one to two minutes, and then I transferred this to my plate. Now I would just serve these with applesauce, um, but for the sake of Elf, this still needs to, you know, somewhat be in the realm of candy pasta. I would also recommend to serve this with some sort of plant milk, maybe some yogurt or cream on the side. Fancy Elf pasta is what I call this. Now, I asked you guys on Instagram fairly recently, what do you think? What is the most iconic Christmas movie? A lot of people said, Love Actually. I'd actually never seen it before. I watched it for the sake of this video um, a couple days ago. On the one hand, it feels quite cozy, pretty funny. But on the other hand, there's also just some so many moments that made me go like, ooh. Which, I mean, yeah, that is to be expected from an early 2000s rom-com. Food-wise, this movie is also interesting. We don't have that many food moments. But at one point, Kira Knightley is walking around with a piece of banoffee pie. And that sounded really good to me. Okay, let's start with the crust. Really basic. Simply just blend up a bunch of plain cookies inside a food processor. Ooh, you could also do digestive biscuits here. Add some melted vegan butter and mix everything with a spatula until you have the consistency of wet sand. Dump this mix into a greased cake tin. This time I skipped the parchment paper because having the cookies stick seemed nearly impossible with the paper being there. When I made this cake for the first time, I went the traditional, I would assume, no bake route, just placing this into the fridge for a couple hours. Yeah. Still delicious, but quite messy. So on my second try, I let it bake for about 10 minutes at 180 degrees Celsius. I let it cool and set while I made the filling. Now, quick disclaimer, this is not gonna be traditional banoffee pie filling, because that is a whole, a whole ordeal with temperatures and potential burnings of sugar. So I made this super lazy caramel flavored custard instead. To a small saucepan, add some sugar and a tiny bit of water. Turn the heat to medium high, let the sugar dissolve and then simmer for about three minutes, stirring frequently. Then add vegan butter, some salt and vanilla. Keep mixing and then add some plant-based whipped cream or milk. Add some in water dissolved cornstarch. Bring everything up to a boil, keep mixing. And then simply add this to your cake base. Now let this rest and chill in the fridge for at least 30 minutes. Okay, once you're ready to serve, cut up two bananas, add those slices. Also whip up some vegan cream. Last but not least, dust over some cacao and serve it up! Nice buttery biscuit base. 
That's so good. With the banana. Yeah, it's like really nice and caramelly. I can't put this all in my mouth. <laughs> I'm not sure this is the most festive of cakes, but I would highly recommend trying this. Speaking of festive Christmas food, let's make something actually holiday related. I could have made an entire video about this next movie alone. There's just so much good looking Christmas food in this. Lots of German sweets even. I'm talking about the one and only 2015 cinematic holiday masterpiece Krampus. I actually saw this movie in theaters when it came out together with my mom. I feel like everyone forgot about this movie. It is absolutely ridiculous, yes, but also iconic, kind of. <laughs> it follows this family that seems to have forgotten what Christmas is all about. You know, they're really mean or dismissive to one another, and so eventually they're being haunted by evil Santa, aka Krampus, which is based on this German slash Austrian slash Eastern European myth. You know, the good kids, they get gifts from St. Nicholas, and the bad kids, they get a visit from Campus. Uh, we even have a German-speaking grandma in this. Heiße Schokolade. Macht alles besser. She says hot chocolate makes everything better. Anyway, I made evil gingerbread people. Yours can be wholesome or sassy. First, prepare a flax egg. Simply combine some fully ground flax seeds with water and set that aside for like five minutes. In a large mixing bowl, cream together some softened vegan butter, sugar, and vanilla. Whip this up using an electric hand mixer until it is light and fluffy. And then add your flex egg along with some molasses. I'd never baked with this before. It is such an interesting taste and it looks very creepy. You could substitute this with date syrup perhaps that has a similar consistency. Give this another blend. And then add your dry ingredients. The all-purpose flour, baking powder, cinnamon. On a lightly floured surface, shape it into a big ball, wrap it up in some parchment paper, and then place it into the fridge for at least two hours. Now, as my dough was firming up, I, I got to crafting. Remember this one? This is not my first time making strange looking gingerbread cookies. I still don't have a gingerbread cookie cutter, by the way, but, you know, creating my own cutouts gives me the freedom to be more weird with these. Preheat your oven to 180 degrees Celsius. Have a baking sheet with parchment paper ready to go. Cut the dough in half and put one half back into the fridge because we're just gonna roll out one half at a time. Roll it out until it's about half a centimeter in thickness. Before cutting anything out, make sure that you can lift the dough nicely and it doesn't stick to the pan. If that is the case, then add a bit more flour to your surface. Bake these for eight to 10 minutes or until golden brown along the edges. And now decorate them with whatever you want. I went ahead and made some sugar dough, like sugar play-doh which I colored in this light pink. I also needed some green. Um, but yeah, they taste so, so yummy. They're not too sweet and I, I really like this recipe. If you are going to recreate any of these recipes today, let me know, share it over on Instagram, tag me in your photos and stories. I need to see what you guys are making with this. I hope you have a cozy and wholesome holiday season and um, yeah, just 
Big shout out to you if you're still watching. I really appreciate it. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Just she been number one, think we can get it right